Crystal meth, methamphetamine, what is it like? What are the effects? Let's go. K-Rugs, the Sober Dog, coming at you. Before I get into it, remember, Sober Dogs does not promote or condone any drug use. Please seek professional medical help if you have an addiction. All right, crystal meth, we're going to get right into it. Meth, what is it like? Methamphetamine, crystal meth is not talked about nearly as much as it should be because the opioid epidemic for obvious reasons gets the majority of the news attention but meth is raging right now in the u.s and a lot of other places and it is bad news and the reason it doesn't get the attention the opioid does is obviously it doesn't people don't od on meth like they do on opioids but meth kills people in a different way, destroying their lives and destroying everything around them and sending them into this addiction spiral that is insanity. On top of the fact that, I mean, you can OD on meth and die regularly, but not like we're seeing with fentanyl and opioids. But what is meth like? So how people take it, they could swallow it, they could snort it, they can inject it, and they can smoke it. Swallowing it usually takes 20 to 30 minutes to kick in. Snorting it usually a minute to two minutes, you know, maybe up to three to four minutes sometimes. Uh, and injecting it and smoking it pretty much instantaneously, it kicks right in. It is just insane. So what does that feel like? The first thing I noticed when snorting it was the pain. Snorting meth hurt so freaking much. It felt like somebody was shoving shards of glass up my nose. It was incredibly painful. But about 60 seconds into that, so it was like doing it, extreme pain, and then about 60 seconds, all of a sudden it was, the pain went away and this extreme euphoric, pleasurable feeling came over me. Obviously, that is when the drug started to kick in in the brain and just releases all these feel-good chemicals, specifically dopamine. And I totally, I don't know if it's, I forgot about the pain, didn't care about the pain, if the pain legitimately went away or what, but all of a sudden it was like blast off into this different realm. After that is this extreme, just stimulant, powerful, uh, confident feeling that is like insane. And that is just the chemicals in the brain going nuts. In rough terms, things like eating, you know, a great meal will release, you know, 100, 100 units of dopamine, give or take, sex, 200, heroin, cocaine, 400, uh, up to five, 600 for crack, cocaine, meth, over a thousand times the dopamine. That is insane. And this is what it's doing in the brain, releasing that beyond control. And it also blocks it from getting recycled back in like it normally should. So there's just this insane amount of dopamine being pumped out when you do meth, staying in the, the synapse area, just going nuts. That's where the pleasure comes from, the extreme euphoria, feeling good. As we know, the problem with that is that screws up our natural levels and our brain from releasing dopamine and doing things like that, you know, uh, later on or when we're not on the drug. Dopamine is the brain's reward thing, so we just want more and more and more of these things that make it feel good. That's why we always like to go for a good meal. It released dopamine. We want to do it again the next day or whatever, but it's a normal, healthy level so we don't go nuts craving another meal, you know, hours after it and pawn off our freaking, uh, you know, pawn our whole house to try to get more food, you know, typically. But that feeling, it kicks in that blast off. During this period, it's like, Tedious and mundane things become exciting and, you know, just you want to get into it. The best way I could describe this is if people have taken Adderall before, there's people you'll talk to, and this happened for me too, studying normally is like, whatever, I don't know, I, it just is what it is. It was part of school, part of life, but it wasn't necessarily something I found pleasurable. 
on Adderall, I loved studying. I was like, I want to study more. I want to study everything. I want to study extra. This is the same thing times, you know, 50 on meth with little things. You could be sitting there like, you know, the most random thing in the world that you don't expect would pique your interest. And normally it wouldn't at all. You get so into that. It could be going down a rabbit hole of, you know, a philosophy. It could be scrubbing the every little nook and cranny on the floorboards on the floor. That's why people go nuts cleaning, uh, organize their whole house, go to that, you know, the basement that they've looked at for 10 years and never wanted to touch because it's just overwhelming and junk and stuff everywhere. On meth, they're like, yes, I'm going to organize everything and get it all, you know, cleaned up. And we'll literally be on their hands and knees with a toothbrush, scrubbing the back corners of the basement, getting this and that. It's insane how much, and that's because all the dopamine, everything seems like a good idea and fun. And we get this, you know, false level of confidence on it that is just insane. During this period, the effects can be you know, psychosis, paranoia, hallucinations, extreme energy, angry outbursts and mood swings, dilated pupils, rapid eye movement, loss of appetite, no appetite, pretty much forget to do, you know, drinking water and eating and pretty much out the window. Jerky movements, twitching, facial tics, constant talking, talking a mile a minute. Uh, increased sexual activity, it makes you so horny be through the roof. And that's another thing with that whole getting stuck, like cleaning and all that. People can get stuck in these sexual kind of rabbit holes where they are either having sex for hours and hours or pleasuring themselves for hours and hours and hours watching porn for hours, days, just get stuck into it. And it's, it's like you can't pull yourself out of it. It's just zoned in on it. High blood pressure, rapid heartbeat, increased body temperature, all the, the effects you normally get from stimulants. You know, this is, you get it insane amounts with meth, that stimulant increase. When it starts to wear off and it lasts a long time, 8, 10, 12 hours, sometimes even longer, that's where obviously most users will use more. And this is where those days, sometimes week binges start. During those periods, all bets are off. This is where the extreme, extreme psychosis, hallucinations, paranoia, delusions come into play. You're going days without sleeping, eating, you know, drinking water in this, I want to say like made up world because you're just like so encompassed in this. I mean, I'm talking sitting, you know, looking through the window at made up, you know, thinking the cops are there coming at you for hours on end, scrubbing little things on the floor for hours on end, thinking it's that popping pimples, picking at your face for hours. I would sit in front of the mirror and pop pimples that aren't even there, some that are scratched, thinking there's bugs on me for hours and you're just lost in this world. And as that time's going on, you're obviously not sleeping, not eating, uh, not drinking water, not taking care of yourself, showering, talking to people, all that normal life relationships, all that. And the longer it goes, the more those effects get worse. That's why day three, four, five, six, I mean, it's just gone. You you are gone in another dimension, basically, of pure insanity and delusions. And then when it wears off, those dopamine levels, and I've said this in a lot of other videos, and it just has to be repeated of they don't go back down to normal. They go so low. The brain cannot make the natural levels because we just increased it by a thousand. So the brain's not making what it should and not releasing what it should. So we go to this depression that is just, oh my God, is it brutal. It sucks. The come down, the depression is terrible. And doctors say it takes about 10 days for our brain to start releasing somewhat decent levels of dopamine again. 
So going on an, a long meth binge, those next 10 days is the total opposite of everything I just said. Nothing is of interest. Everything is miserable. You don't want to do anything, see anybody, talk to any, you just, everything sucks. Like everything. Your favorite thing in the world just sucks, no matter what it is. Your favorite meal, exercise, uh, sex, whatever. It just, everything is because the brain is just like shut down normal feel good activities. This is why, you know, so many users relapse and go back and use more and use more and use more because we want to keep getting that peak effect that we're now in the dumps of because, you know, everything wore out of our system and it's like the brain is just shut off and we can't experience any pleasure. So we go use more and start to cycle over and over and over. Meth really is an insane substance. I didn't do a ton of it. For me, crack, cocaine, and heroin were the big ones. Um, I would inject heroin and cocaine most of the time was my drug of choice. And the big difference between meth and cocaine is how long it lasts. With the meth, you know, or, or, or the cocaine, every 30 minutes you need more. Meth, 6, 8, 10, 12 hours, even longer it lasts. So that's the insane difference. But uh, I, I did enough to know how dangerous and insane it is and how much damage it does. Don't do it. Don't risk it. The high is way high, but the low is way low and longer and worse and destruction. It sucks. That is what meth is like.